Hello everyone. Today I'm excited to share with you a heartwarming story called My Neighbor Totoro. Specifically, this movie talked about a small family who just moved to live in the countryside and started the journey to live in a haunted house. Without delay, let's watch this movie together. Don't forget to ring the bell and subscribe to our channel if you're interested. Spoiler alert! The movie started where a busy truck was delivering lots of housing equipment for a family who had just moved their living conditions to the countryside. The family on the bus was Mr. Tatsu, who was the father of the two lovely girls. His loving children were Satsuki, the oldest one, and the youngest was Mei. Tatsu was a university teacher. Along the way of the journey to the new house, they saw fabulous views that warmed their hearts. At one point, he stopped by and asked a young boy named Kanta. Tatsu asked, "Excuse me, I am new here. May I know where your parents are?" I think so. Kanta pointed. Pointed out that his parents were farming in the place nearby, but Kanta was not interested in talking to Satsuki and Mei. Now all the members arrived at the new place where there was a stream and their house looked ancient. The air was thick with excitement as the two sisters embarked on their new lives there. While they were playing, they happened to see an enormous tree that they had never seen before in their life. Then their father called both of them to check the house together. Satsuki and Mei. Were cautious with the house, and they appeared to see an acorn. After a while, there was another acorn falling from the ceiling. May asked, "Papa, why is there an acorn here?" Tatsu replied, "Of course, there might be a squirrel here." Then Tatsu continued his work, and he suggested the two kids to check what was in the kitchen. Once they opened the kitchen door, they happened to see lots of dark creatures, whether or not they were dust. Seeing this, they shouted and asked their dad, "Dad, dad, we saw." Strange creatures. Tatsu responded, "Don't worry, kids. I believe those are just dust bunnies. During the daytime, no strange creatures are here. They were just dark dust." Mei and Satsuki started to feel normal with the dust and called them to come out. While those strange creatures were moving around their feet, then Tatsu suggested his children to find the upstairs of the house first. Mei and Satsuki began to challenge one another to find the door to the upstairs. Once they reached the stairs. An acorn fell again, and they ran upstairs. Surprisingly, they fell lots of dust bunnies. Satsuki then shouted and tried to open the windows. In May, and she also fell straight to those small bunnies running around into a hole. Satsuki shouted and tried to tell her dad there must have been something happening here, but her dad encouraged her. He loved the haunted house. Satsuki then hurried to help her father with the work. At that time, May was still alone, and she was curious. About what was inside. Once she pointed into it, there were lots of dusty, dark bunnies running to the roof, and only one bunny fell off. May grabbed the one and flipped it so hard. Afterward, she ran downstairs and happened to see an old lady. May started to run inside the house, and Tatsu told them that this old woman was Nanny. He continued that she was the one who looked after the house while they were naughty, especially when he was away from work. Satsuki politely introduced herself and her sister to Nanny. Satsuki was shocked to see that her feet and May's feet were dirty with dark dust. Nanny explained to them that those were the spirit called Susu Watari. That stayed in an old house. Nani continued, "Those spirits will leave the house if there are people." May said that there would be no joy anymore if those dust bunnies flew away. After that, May and Satsuki were told to bring some water to clean up the house, and they were happy to do the housework. After cleaning up, Kanta took some food for Nani, Satsuki, and May. Kanta was kind of scared not to talk to Satsuki, and he showed his childish behavior to Satsuki. Kanta said that they lived in a hot. Haunted house. A few moments later, Satsuki and her family were having the food together, and they thanked Nani for her help. In the evening, Tatsu cooked some food and asked Satsuki to take some wood outside. Upon stepping outside, Satsuki gazed immediately fell upon the unusual appearance of the tree. While taking a shower together, the family heard the loud noise of the wind waves. They were scared whether the house was going to fly. Tatsu immediately laughed like crazy with a determined tone. 
soon he exclaimed, Our laughter must be stronger, scaring away the ghosts. Upon hearing this, the children began to laugh even harder, mirroring their father's laughter. As a result, Susuwatari spirits were flying away from their house to the gigantic tree. Then the whole family spent a sweet night there. In the morning, the family started to wash the clothes and went to see their mother at the hospital. So the reason they moved here was because their mother's condition. At the same time, Tatsu was also working at a local university. On their way, they greeted Nani while Kanta was not interested in talking to Satsuki and Mei. They took a break under a tree while tired, then proceeded to see their mother. Once they arrived, Satsuki ran to hug her mother tightly. The mother understood that Satsuki was a good child looking after the family. Satsuki told her mom about the haunted house, but her mother was happy to live there with them. Mei was happy to hear that from her mom. Then the whole family spent time together happily. When they arrived home, they were so happy that the mother would be home soon. One morning, Tatsu woke up late and then Satsuki was helping to prepare breakfast instead. Satsuki also prepared lunch boxes for Mei and her father. After that, Satsuki was called to school by her new friend. Therefore, Tatsu and Mei were home together. Tatsu was trying to complete his work while Mei was playing outside. Mei was running around and grabbed some flowers for her dad. Even though he was stressed, he felt better because of this small action. While playing alone in the garden, Mei found some acorns leading away for her to a place. After that, she saw a white creature walking. Mei followed the creature and it saw her. Then the creature tried to disappear from Mei. Mei ran as fast as the creature did. After that, the creature disappeared again. Mei checked again and, to her surprise, saw two creatures under her house and then she tried to keep her eyes on them. Surprisingly, the two creatures attempted to flee from Mei, but she keenly observed their every move and pursued them. They led her to a hidden way where Mei dropped her head and continued following the two creatures. As she followed, she saw a hole and fell into a new place where there was a fantasy view. Then Mei saw another enormous creature. Mei was brave enough to befriend the creature and she called the creature Totoro. Totoro opened his mouth hugely and played with Mei. After a few minutes, Mei fell asleep there. Now Sasuke was home and couldn't find Mei. Her father said that Mei was playing around the garden. Tatsu then saw Mei's head and followed the hidden way to find Mei laying down alone in the middle of the bush. Sasuke woke her sister up and Mei told Sasuke that she saw a troll. Tatsu came and was surprised to see that there was a hidden forest inside this huge tree. Then Mei tried to find the hole again and again but only found a way to her house. Sasuke and Tatsu didn't seem to believe it, making Mei sad because she was telling them the truth. Then Tatsu explained that, We believe in you, Mei. You might have seen the spirit who take care of this forest. You're lucky, therefore we all need to show our respect to them. The family climbed the giant tree where Mei saw the hole she fell into, but the hole disappeared. They then showed respect to the spirit when Mei fell into the hole. Mei and Sasuke wanted to see the spirit so badly, but Tatsu encouraged them that if they were lucky, the spirit would show their presence again. After showing respect, they came back home. Sasuke sat down to generalize her story about Dotoro, filled with hope to one day meet him in person. At midnight, Dotoro was sitting on the tree and playing a musical instrument beautifully. The next morning, Satsuki came to ask for help from Nani to look after Mei because she was going to school and her father was at work. On the other hand, Kanta was looking at Satsuki like he saw a ghost. He kept his eye on her even while they were studying. A few moments later, Mei and Nani came to school to find Satsuki. Satsuki then asked her teacher to see Mei. Then Nani told Satsuki that Mei had cried and asked to come here. Satsuki did not know what to do and then she asked the teacher to keep Mei in class. While they were in class, Mei started to draw Totoro and she talked too loudly. When the class ended, the two sisters went back home. The rain was coming down in torrents, as if it were raining cats and dogs. Satsuki then helped Mei because Mei fell while running. Shortly, he came back and willing to help them by giving them his old umbrella. Satsuki asked, What's about you, Ganta? Ganta had no reply and ran away. After arriving home, the two sisters had some food together. Then they walked back to Ganta's house to give him his umbrella. After that, 
they walked straight to the bus stop to wait their father because they knew their father forgot to bring the umbrella. Once they waited for the first bus, they had not seen their father coming back. They waited until late evening, and May was playing with the water. May then found a spiritual place, making her scared. They kept waiting until there was a by crossing them. After a few hours, May was sleepy because they waited too long. Then May slept on Satsuki's back. The rain kept dropping, and Satsuki suddenly heard a strange noise walking, trembling towards her. To her shock, she heard the unmistakable sound of Totoro's footsteps. Satsuki was surprised that Totoro existed, like May said. Satsuki felt that Totoro was a loving creature, and then she started to greet Totoro. She gave Totoro an umbrella, and Totoro accepted. The rain drops off on the tree's leaf excited Totoro. He jumped heavily, causing the raindrops to crash down like falling gravel. After that, he shouted until May was awakened, and a strange vehicle, like a bus, ran toward them. Satsuki thought that her father was coming, but it was a cat bus for Totoro. Then Totoro gave her a package of seeds. The two sisters opened their eyes wide and questioned what was happening. Once Totoro departed, the father's bus arrived, and they informed Tatsu that they had actually seen Totoro. Arriving home, Satsuki started journalizing again and sent her writing to her mother. They started to grow the seeds provided by Totoro. Sitting down, they asked about the seeds growth timeline. They asked the father about it, and he said that Totoro would help. When they went to bed, Satsuki saw that Totoro and his friend were dancing around the seeds. She called May to imitate Totoro's styles. After a while, Totoro used magic to make the tree grow taller like never before. Totoro brought them to see the view of the new tree and the fantastic view of the countryside. In the morning, they learned that it was just a dream last night, but were surprised to see the seeds had grown slightly. The two sisters were happy. The giggles echoing through the house. One day, there was a telegram from the hospital while the two sisters were spending the time with Nanny and collecting some vegetables. That was because their mother would come back home on Saturday next week. May eagerly picked a ripe corn from the field, excited to surprise her mom with it. Suddenly, Kenta brought the telegram to Satsuki, and Nanny suggested that she opened it. Satsuki couldn't wait to read it, and then she got to know that the hospital needed her dad to get back to them. It sounded like a huge problem of the time that the two sisters believed there was something bad going to happen. Satsuki asked Nanny, "What should I do now, Grandma?" Nanny replied, "Well, Kanta could lead you to use the telephone in the main house, so." That you follow him. Think so. May tried to follow her sister. Even Satsuki told her to stay with Nani. After running for a while, May got lost while Satsuki tried to reach Tatsu about her mother. She asked, "Please contact hospital dad and don't forget to keep me updated." Then May got lost again and met a sheep, and it wanted to eat her corn. She refused because the corn was for her mom. Once May found her sister, she was scared. Satsuki told May about their mom's condition that she might not come home for now, and since. May missed her mom a lot. She seemed to not accept anything. Satsuki was really mad and said, "I don't want to talk to you. You're crazy." Then May cried a lot, and they came back home. They were hopeless, and then Nani encouraged them to calm themselves down. Nani encouraged Satsuki that her mom was going to be okay because she just had a cold. However, Satsuki's mind was filled with worry as she questioned why the hospital had sent such a message. She believed that there must have been something serious. Then May heard. Everything, and she took her shoes to see her mother alone. Nani and Satsuki searched desperately, their worry growing with each passing moment. As May remained nowhere in sight, Satsuki said, "Maybe my sister was going to the hospital because I used." Hush was on her. Nani was worried that May couldn't make it because it might have taken three hours to reach the hospital for an adult. After that, Satsuki ran out so fast to find May. Nani told Kanta to inform his father that May was lost. For Satsuki, she was either mad or worried about May since the evening came soon. She asked a the man there if he could see a little girl, but he didn't. After a while, May ran into a roaring motorcycle, its engine screaming dangerously, desperate to ask about her sister. But they seemed not to notice May's presence. Kanta rode his bike to inform Satsuki that Nani found a shoe in the lake. Satsuki then ran back to the place to see if it was her sister's shoe and recalled her memory with May. She felt guilty that she shouldn't have used harsh words on May. When she arrived, she happened to know that the shoe didn't belong to May. Suddenly, Satsuki saw a shoe tree, so she wished for help from Totoro. She immediately ran to the forest of the tree and met Totoro. She asked Totoro to. 
help find Mai since it nearly became dark. Totoro called his bus to take Sasuke to find Mai. The bus ran so fast, like the speed of light. Sasuke knew the other people couldn't see the bus. The bus opened the door for Sasuke and changed its purpose to find Mai. When it ran just a few minutes, it came across different places and it crawled on the wire. On the other hand, Mei was sad and waiting for Satsuki because she was lost. Shortly afterward, Satsuki arrived. Mei was shocked to see that Satsuki took the bus. Satsuki didn't blame her sister and hugged her with all her heart. She then asked softly, Did you bring the corn for mom? Mei replied, Yes. Hearing so, the bus changed its direction to see the mom at the hospital. The mother was worried because her kids might have been overwhelmed. However, the two sisters were sitting on the tree and they were so happy that their mother was fine and ready to go back home. After a few minutes, the father noticed the corn written that it was for his wife by the kids. The two sisters took the bus home safely and Nani gave them hugs. Now it comes to the end of the movie. Nature brings us peace and we need to protect and preserve nature. One day we will understand why we must protect nature. Plus, don't blame or use harsh words to anyone we love because we don't know what the future will bring. Try to be nice so that you won't have regrets. Thank you for your time. See you in the next video.